On this episode, we're talking about how the Onion Omega Kickstarter ended, I give you a pro tip for 3D printing, and I bought an Intel Jewel. Hey everybody, welcome to episode eight of Daily IoT. My name is Kevin, and it's been a while. Took a, a couple of weeks off there. Uh, I was at a conference for a week, then I got super sick, uh, but we are back, we're back at it. I, I promise, I keep saying it, that we're gonna have two or three episodes a week, but like, it's Monday and we got an episode. Um, it'll be, it'll drop tonight uh, before everybody wakes up tomorrow morning, Tuesday, uh, but I promise I'm gonna try to get these out on a more regular basis. Um, but let's hop into what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, first thing, I've been talking about the Onion Omega uh, Kickstarter updates and things like that. I just wanted to bring some closure to that topic. The Kickstarter has ended. Obviously, it's successfully funded. Uh, we ended up with uh, over $670,000 and over 16,000 backers. So very popular, uh, blew away the, the goals that they set. And those should be shipping in the, it says late December. Um, I think probably January is probably a little more realistic to when you would probably actually see your Omega. Uh, now, if you didn't get a chance to back that on Kickstarter, it is now over on Indiegogo. I will stick a link down in the description so you can head over. If you missed the Kickstarter wave, you can still essentially pre-order one. Uh, I'll put the link down below so you guys can head over there. Okay, uh, next up we are talking about Intel Joule. So two weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to be able to attend Intel's developer forum in San Francisco. It's the first time I've been to San Francisco, um, uh, where Intel announced the Intel Joule module. And I picked one up while I was there. Let's see the lighting, Let's see if you can get that up close. Um, I'll throw a picture of it right there. And this is Intel's new I'm not even gonna call it a Raspberry Pi competitor because it's not for several reasons, and I'll talk about those in a second, but this is Intel's um, entrance into the market of Internet of Things platforms, and I guess not really entrance. So there's there's been the Intel Edison, some things like that. Uh, the Jewel is a little bit different uh, from comments made at the conference. It sounds like Intel Edison will basically hit an end of life, and the Jewel is the new platform coming out of Intel. So. Really quick specs on this. Uh, if you if you look at the board here, uh, and actually I won't even do this. I'll keep the picture up over here. Um, the Joule module itself is that silver thing in the middle, and it's sitting on the carrier board, and that is the dev kit basically that you can buy from Intel. Now the Joule module itself uh, has some pretty impressive specs. It is a 1.7 gig quad core processor. It can do 4K video. It can handle up to four camera inputs streaming at 30 frames a second. It has four gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard EMMC flash memory. Um, also has an SD card slot for um, things like that. Now, uh, the carrier board uh, is useful. It has a power, um, power search circuitry on it. It's got USB um, micro for um, serial debugging. I take that back. Um, you know what, I can't remember which one's for serial you're digging. There's a bunch of USB ports on here. There's USB-C, there's USB-A, there's micro. Um, and uh, the, the A port serves as uh, basically an input. It's the USB port. You can plug a hub into that. You can plug a camera into that, speakers, things like that. The USB-C port is used for um, flashing updates to like the BIOS and things like that. And uh, it's a pretty powerful little board. However, the price tag is what's really gonna kill you. This is the 570X, which is the more powerful of the modules. They'll be releasing a 550X uh, soon, uh, but the 570X development board that I have right here in my hand uh, will run you $370, uh, which is super pricey. That's why I say it's not really a Raspberry Pi competitor. Yes, it has more power than a Raspberry Pi. However, you're comparing $35 or even on like the zero down to five, ten dollars for a Raspberry Pi, three hundred and seventy dollars. It is no, they're not competing against each other. 
Um, so very pricey. Uh, Intel said that they will sell just the Joule module, but that will be a lot like the Intel Edison. It will be basically worthless without a carrier board. That's what they're calling them, carrier boards that break out things like IO and things like that. So uh, that is the Intel Joule. Um, I will not be making videos about this. Uh, I feel like it's just too expensive of a platform for people getting into Internet of Things. If you need hardcore video processing, uh, 30 frames per second kind of streaming, multiple cameras, 4K video output, uh, then this is something that you might want to look into. Uh, however, for just getting started, I would still recommend things like a Raspberry Pi and Onion Omega, uh, things like that. While I was talking, I remembered this is not a USB port on the very end here. This is a micro uh, HDMI. So that's how you can plug a monitor into it. I knew I was getting those mixed up. Um, what's nice about this, if you have questions about the Joule, uh, actually through my job, I had the opportunity. I got one of these six weeks before Intel announced them. I have been uh, developing on it quite a bit using uh, Windows IoT Core. Um, but if you have questions about the board itself, feel free to ask. I have quite a bit of experience um, before anybody else was even able to get their hands on it. So um, Intel Joule, it's a powerful little board, but probably not what you're looking to get started in. Okay, uh, really quick. Also, while I was in San Francisco, I had an opportunity to visit the good folks at Fictiv. And I've mentioned them a couple of times. They do 3D printing uh, where you can send a design, they'll 3D print it and ship it to you overnight or in two days. Uh, that's uh, their business, uh, but they were just down the street at the, uh, from the hotel I was staying in, so I stopped by the office. They were nice enough to invite me down, got to meet the team. Awesome group of people down there, uh, really great. But while I was there, I got sort of a pro tip for 3D printing that I wanted to share with everybody, and that is if you are printing things with ABS, uh, we had printed something for IDF that we had to basically weld together with like a 3D doodler, and... Um, if it's ABS, if you have ABS printed parts and you need to uh, basically weld them together or fuse them together, acetone is a way to do that. You take like a, a hobby brush, you brush the two surfaces with a little bit of acetone. You can pick it up at any hardware store. You hold the pieces together. The acetone essentially melts the ABS and they will fuse together. According to the people at Fictiv, that will create a bond that's actually stronger than the printed ABS. And so it doesn't take a lot. You just brush a little bit on, you hold them together, and as soon as they start to stick, you can just let them go, let it sit for a few minutes, and you will have a very strong bond between two 3D printed parts. So a little pro tip there from the people at Fictiv. Uh, they are always sharing that kind of knowledge. You can check out their blog, always sharing a lot of insider things like that. All right, let's see. What else do we have to cover here? Oh, we gotta take care of our giveaway winner. Thank you to everybody who left comments uh, about the Olympics. It was forever ago, the last episode about uh, what country you were cheering for and what was your favorite sport. We had uh, some good comments there. Uh, drew a name at random and happy to announce that Edward White is the winner of one of these particle core kits that I have to give away. So Edward, uh, shoot me an email. My email address is at the bottom of the screen right now, it's kevin at sidwar.com, and I will get an address from you and ship that particle core kit to you. Okay, that does it for today's episode. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Again, I am going to get more episodes out, two or three a week. I'm gonna commit to two this week for sure. This is one, we're early in the week, I'll definitely get another. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed in the last month. Uh, we're getting new subscribers all the time. I appreciate all of you. And uh, I really appreciate you watching Daily IoT, where together we're learning all about the Internet of Things one day at a time.